there is a reason why i got interested in this subject the greatest ambition in my life was to become a scientist and right from my early childhood i used to read much beyond my age and when i was in 11th almost when i was in 9th i lost my faith because all the books that i used to read they pointed to evolution and if evolution is right then you have to suspect a lot of things mentioned in the bible by the time i was in 12th actually in madhya pradesh it was 11th i had serious doubts and friends it took me 14 years of study to come back to a deep commitment and faith in the bible therefore if there is anyone this evening who has ever had questions about bible and science don't think that you are alone there are lot of people around who definitely have questions related to this subject so now the question this evening with which i want to begin is because uh, probably many of you thought that i might give the answer last week but i did not and the question is has modern science disproved the bible or the same question can be put in a different way is there a conflict between modern science and the bible i let the cat out of the bag first and do the explanation later the answer is no modern science has not disproved the bible modern science has not challenged the bible there is no conflict between modern science and the bible in fact modern science especially in the second half of the 20th century turned out to be the best friend which bible could have or you may say that's amazing yes it is amazing more so because in the 19th century when it was time for the rationalists and anti christian elements to rule the world of thought the world of philosophy the world of theology they had very firmly declared that another century of progress and bible would be wiped out from the scene in the light of that it is amazing it is wonderful that the last of half of the 20th century not only proved them wrong but also brought or brought forth a lot of extra support in favor of bible you may say that's wonderful but can you throw a little light on that because we hear here and there that such and such proof or such and such discovery from the world of science has disproved the bible yes i too hear perhaps i hear more than you because by virtue of my ministry my ministry is to young, help young people i read all kinds of rationalistic magazines everything in fact last week i told you it is joseph edamer a man an atheist who actually was my first motivation to learn malayalam i've been reading almost all his books it's a struggle for me to read and grasp it in malayalam but i read all his books so compared to you perhaps i hear it 10 times every week that perhaps this discovery is against the bible that discovery or this proof is against the bible so when i say that no that's not right you may immediately ask then why do people say and that's where i want to begin this evening because uh, once you get an answer to that question it becomes easier for me to communicate with you and it also becomes easier for you to grasp the basic issues we hear a lot in the name of science and we also know that these days science is equated with truth very true science is trying to discover truth about this universe but then we also have to remember that not everything that is current in the name of science is scientific 
or scientifically accurate or scientifically established. Let me give you an example. I developed high blood pressure when I was 15. They put me on medicine when I was 18. And when I was 40, my cardiologist said, take a vitamin E, 400, every day, all your life. Last week, the physician in my family said, stop it immediately, you are killing yourself. Both of them are medical doctors. Both of them are concerned about me. One, my close friend, the other, my own son. Both of them love me. My friend advised me to take E all my life based upon the best information that was available to him at that time. But then, a decade of research has changed the picture. And today, my doctor is worried that I am taking too much of it, it's going to harm me. So not everything in the name of science, you should understand, not everything is an established fact. That is the point from where we begin our study this evening. When we study science, we hear words such as observation, and I'm sure anyone who has uh, done practicals in schools or colleges, he has taken observations in the file. Observations, we have heard about hypothesis, we have heard about data, we all have heard about assumptions, we all have heard about facts, we have heard about interpretation, we have heard about laws, we have heard about theories, we also have heard about schools of thought, we have heard about models, model, model of the atom. All of them are part of science and science cannot grow without any of them. But please remember, though all of them are components of science, not all of them have the same reliability, the same value, the same truth value. What is a law represents information codified after all kinds of investigation where you are certain that this is the way things happen. Good example is the law of gravitation. Every particle in this universe attracts every other particle. At the same time there are theories, lot of theories. In fact, if you pick up any standard textbook of science, a good amount of it would be theory, especially if you move away from physical sciences, say if you go into biological sciences. A good example, but then I'll come to the physical sciences. Even in physical sciences, there are a lot of theories. A good example is the origin of moon. How was moon formed? And I don't know whether in Kerala, whether they teach you in uh, geography, but we studied in geography. So one of the teachers said originally, the earth was a more massive planet, and as it was cooling down, a portion somehow separated out of it and started revolving around the earth. Very soon, another textbook, another year, another textbook, and they said, uh, no, it was not like that, they said. Rather, sun was more massive and as it was cooling down, a lot of pieces went out of it and they became planets. Earth also became a planet and in the process when it was about to become or as it was becoming a planet, another piece that came out of the sun started revolving the earth. That's how moon, moon was formed. <coughs> another year, another textbook. And they said, no, that's not the way. Actually, the earth was revolving around the sun and then a stray piece of mass was going through the skies and earth, because of its gravitational force, captured it. And now it is revolving, moving around the earth. So there are three theories. In fact, we call it the sister 
daughter wife theory if it came out of the earth it is the daughter if they were formed together it is a sister if the earth captured it it is the wife which of them is right well they don't know there are three different theories but the final answer is not here so this way science is a combination of things thoroughly established and things about which investigations are going on even today and therefore if somebody comes and says hey listen such and such statement or such and such discovery of the science has disproved the bible hold on do not be dismayed and ask that person to cool down and ask that person whether it is an established fact of science i gave a lot of words there are many more words related to the categories of information in the world of science but all of them can be classified into roughly into two groups and easy to remember so please remember this and from there we start the turning point of my discussion what all information is given to us in the name of science can roughly be classified into facts of science established facts of science and non established theories if you keep these two phrases in your mind it becomes easier to understand the subject it becomes easier to handle the subject and it becomes easier to tackle those people who claim that there are scientific errors in the bible or that science has dis disproved the bible just remember these two categories established facts of science and non established theories of science out of these two obviously in any court of law only established facts can be presented a theory has no value as evidence when you go to a court of law as a witness they will repeatedly ask you to state the facts not your theories not your deductions state the facts proof demands facts not theories so when we examine bible in the light of science or when we discuss the question of bible and science we must remember that only established facts of science can be used to question the bible or examine the bible theories cannot be used because no theory remains unchanged for a very long period of time all of you have studied atomic structure isn't it we all know how before dalton or even dalton said that atom cannot be divided and then they found out that atom is made up of smaller particles and therefore atom can be divided then they said okay atom is made up of protons and neutrons and electrons but they cannot be divided that was the prevailing opinion around in the beginning of 1900s and then 1960 two scientists proposed that protons and neutrons were made up of smaller particles and the whole scientific community was alarmed so much so that they said listen it's only a theory we are not making any claims what about the situation today today the scientific community believes that protons neutrons and that kind of particles are made up of sub particles known as quarks last week i told you my 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 research was on quarks and finally those who propose quarks they said that's it we have arrived at the final building block of matter and as we were doing research somebody proposed that quarks are made of sub particles known as prions for last 400 years they thought this is the last this is the end this is the final but every time they think it is final they are discovering further substructures so there are areas in science which represent only what we know thus far but if you ask for whether that is final there are many areas where they would have to say we don't know 
When I worked on quarks, when I started working on quarks, I thought that was the final. One day my professor said, Johnson, we are in trouble because now they think quarks are not final. Probably my children or grandchildren will work on prions. Do you think that would be the final? No, nobody knows. So when we examine the word of God, we have to use only that information about which we know for sure. And when we do that, or when anybody else does that, whether he is a Christian, non-Christian, whether a believer in God, non-believer in God, whether he is an aggressive atheist, he will discover some to great joy, some to great surprise, and some to great distress that no established fact of science has contradicted the Bible. Please listen to me. This statement is worth a lot. No established fact of science has disproved or questioned any statement of Bible and no statement of Bible has questioned or no statement of Bible has come in con conflict with any established fact of science. Oh, you may say, but listen, they say the earth, the universe was formed by a big bang and the Bible says God created it. Listen, often we become emotional when we hear about something and we come to conclusions emotionally without pausing to think. Bible says that God created the universe in the beginning. In the beginning of whatever it was, in the beginning of time. Was it a big bang? Was it something else? The word of God doesn't say. And therefore, if the big bang theory is established to be a fact, there is no conflict. A conflict would come only when science discovers that the universe has a beginning and if the word of God says that it has no beginning, that's a conflict. But Genesis says that the universe has a beginning. That is ex exactly, that is what the Big Bang Theory also says. Genesis doesn't say about the way God created. Big Bang is trying to understand the way the universe came into existence. There is no conflict. And on top of that, the Big Bang Theory is only a theory. It is not an established fact of cosmology or cosmogony. Oh, you may say, what are you saying? Is, isn't, it that, isn't that some kind of a stupid statement? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Though Big Bang became very popular in the 1960s, the scientific community started questioning Big Bang by 70s. And by 80s and 90s, there, there were a large number of scientists who dissented against this theory. And today there is a substantial number of scientists who dissent against Big Bang. And they say, no, Big Bang is not the real picture. It is not an established fact. It is only a theory. And perhaps our theory is better than that. There are a number of scientific journals and scientific papers devoted to that. So please understand, if you are talking about Bible and science, if you are talking only about facts of science, if you are talking only about established facts of science, then no established fact of science has ever questioned the Bible. And no statement of Bible has ever questioned an established fact of science. In fact, there are several thousand statements in the Bible which have some bearing or other on some area or other of sciences. Now, when I say science, um, I must hasten to add that science itself is a whole spectrum. On one spectrum are the exact sciences, such as the physical sciences. And on the other spectrum are the most non-exact sciences, such as the social sciences, which are still in a very primitive stage, very, very primitive stage. In physics, 
in some areas things are so accurate that based upon the theory you can create something and it gives you a result no experimental verification is needed the theory is so accurate it has reached such an accurate stage that from there you can get the results and the best example would be some of the nuclear explosions that our neighbors conducted based upon theory they fabricated devices and the first attempt they were successful from there let us move to more non exact sciences a good example would be meteorology know about the climate tomorrow so the man who is an expert in climate runs the program on a supercomputer and says there is a possibility of heavy rain tomorrow so you cancel the trip and you find that it's strong sun so then he says that uh, we are sure that the day after tomorrow it's going to be totally dry so you don't do not even take your umbrella and all the electronic gadgets are with you and suddenly the whole sky pours on your head is he trying to fool you are the are the people who forecast the climate trying to fool you not at all the problem is that branch of science is still very approximate they are not able to predict things in an exact manner from there we go to the other end of the spectrum and that is the social sciences where predictions are much more difficult so when i say science please remember i am talking about the whole spectrum but most of my discussion this evening would be related to the more exact sciences when we come to the more exact sciences we find that the word of god makes a number of statements which have some bearing or other on the more exact sciences such as physics or astronomy or astrogony that is the birth of the universe lots of statements let me pick some of those statements and let us see whether the word of god gives us the information accurately or whether the word of god makes a mistake the first verse in bible is known to all of you in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth which emphatically says that the universe had an origin a finite origin the universe is not infinite a lot of people used to laugh at that statement especially in the 19th century because in 19th century the scientific establishment was of the opinion that the universe is infinite in fact that idea continued up to the 1950s they all thought that, that the universe was infinite in age it had no beginning and they used to say look bible says that the universe had a beginning but scientific knowledge says that the universe had no beginning but then starting from 1950 onwards the scientific community had to change its opinion its understanding a clearer understanding of the second law of thermodynamics and many other laws of physics made it clear that the universe has a finite age it is not infinite the universe had a beginning that is exactly what genesis 1 says that the universe had a beginning so when the word of god makes a statement related to the world of science please remember it does not come in conflict with any established fact of science in fact a lot of statements in the word of god not only contain scientific information they also anticipate science they give us information scientific information hundreds or thousands of years before the scientific community could discover them i'll mention some of them genesis chapter 1 verse 4 for second half says and god divided the light from the darkness and god called the light day and darkness he called night and i hope you remember reading in genesis 
it was evening it was morning it was day it was night so the the word of god clearly says that on the face of the earth there is a division between light and darkness and that statement was made in the book of genesis about 3500 years ago it was verified only in the 1950s when man sent artificial satellites or when man sent rockets into satellites and from the atmosphere from space the correct word would be from space 3 to 400 kilometers above the earth they started photographing the earth and it became clear for the first time that there is a clear cut division between light and darkness on the globe and that there is a clear dividing mark between light and darkness which continually advances in keeping with the rotation of the earth that's exactly what the word of god says in exodus chapter 23 it talks about agriculture it says six years you can cultivate the land but once every seventh year leave it leave it as it is let the earth take a rest let the biological life flourish let those who don't have anything get something 19th century was a time of over exploitation of agricultural resources the early 20th century was again a time of over exploitation of agricultural resources they thought that artificial fertilizers would multiply everything farm produces to such a level that man would never have to see any shortage and lo suddenly they discovered that because of over exploitation agricultural land was becoming barren useless you could pour in chemi- chemicals to make it fertile but once it became barren no amount of additional chemicals could return the fertility of the land and eventually they discovered that there is a solution and the solution is do nothing leave it don't touch it leave that agricultural land untouched once every 7 years use it for 6 years exploit it in the 7th year don't touch the land give it a rest and the fertility comes back that's exactly the rule which god gave in exodus in fact a large number of statements related to the world of science are found in the first five books of the bible and all of them were produced all of them were written by moses 3500 years from today there is another book which contains a large number of statements related to the science to the world of science and that was written hundreds of years before the time of moses the book of job and the book of job contains a large number of statements related to the world of science so if we look at these six books which contain a large number of statements related to the world of science we would be surprised let me give you some more statements today all of you know about the need for hygiene in fact the the people of kerala they are over clean even if not needed they wash their hands fine i i'm, I'm not di- discouraging you okay there is even a statement that godliness cleanliness is next to godliness the book of exodus and the book of leviticus give a large number of statements related to cleanliness cleaning your hand taking bath after you touch a piece of flesh a dead body a dead animal which might be contaminate which which might be carrying germs you must wash yourself you must clean yourself 
Today, when you go into a physician's clinic, many of them, they wash before they examine the next patient. But even those who are in medical field sometimes forget that this practice is not even one century old. Not even one century old. The first doctor, Ignaz Semeluis, who introduced the practice of washing, was so harassed by his fellow medical doctors that he shot himself dead. Happened in the first part of the 20th century. He was working in a hospital and he found that it was mainly maternity. He found that a lot of women who came there for delivery, they were dying during the process of delivery or before that. People were amazed and he as a medical doctor was dismayed that he wants to give life and people here are dying and the level of death is very high. He found that one of their practices was responsible. In the morning, the most senior doctor would come and first of all he would examine all the dead bodies. And then, along with his students, he would go to the wards and with the same bare hands he would examine the patients. He made it a strict rule that after you examine the dead bodies, you have to wash your hands thoroughly before you handle the patients. The death rate came down to approximately 10%, which means where 10 women were dying, the rate of death was reduced to one. Nine lives were saved. His fellow medical doctors chased him. He had to flee his country. He went to another European country. He imposed the same rule. The medical community chased him again. And finally, he took a revolver and shot himself dead. It's less than a century. The practice of washing is less than a century old. 3,500 years ago, the word of God made numerous statements related to washing, cleansing, health, hygiene. When the word of God makes a statement related to the world of science, it contains information which the world of science discovered only centuries or, or even millennia after that statement came into the word of God. Today we are all exceedingly careful about drinking water. Nobody thought that people would be buying mineral water in India, 10 rupees a bottle. In fact, when it was introduced, that's almost two decades ago, a bottle was almost 25 rupees. Two decades, today what they sell for 10, 25 years ago, the same thing was costing 25. That was a fortune. Nobody thought that people would start using mineral water or sterilized water or filtered water, whatever you say. But it has picked up, isn't it? But how, among how many people has it picked up? What percentage? Only a small percentage of people in India. Even today, the majority of our, our people, Indians, they don't know that drinking water should not be contaminated by things which can kill people. And look at India. Go to any state in India. You would find that all the minerals, mineral waste is pumped into rivers. Not only mineral waste, they have found that rivers from where you drink water, when, from where you take water, filter and drink, that is the best source to dump all your sewage, human excreta. The word of God laced on very strict rules about water, cleanliness of water, clean water, unclean water. 
If you turn to Leviticus chapter 11, I'm not going to read, but if you turn to 11, and if you read from verse 29 to 36, it reads like the diary of a health inspector, where the word of God lays down strict rules about cleanliness of water. In the same way, if you go to the beginning of the same chapter, Leviticus chapter 11, verses 1 to 3, or if you go to the fifth book in the bible which is deuteronomy chapter 14 you would find many statements where meat which is fit for consumption and which is not fit for consumption are differentiated from each other also some of these passages such as leviticus chapter 11 verse 9 tells about what kind of flesh to eat what kind of fish to consume what kind to avoid in 20th century it became clear that flesh can give you some that means consumption of unhealthy unfit unfit contaminated flesh can give you serious problems the word of god gave guidelines 3500 years ago which were the best possible at that time they did not have microscopes they did not have methods to inspect the way we inspect today they did not have antibiotics they did not have modern medicines the best method those days was avoid be careful avoid those things which can harm you avoid the kind of meat which can harm you avoid the kinds of fish which might be carriers of germs using the layman's language and in the last 100 years people who have been studying science and people who have been studying bible they have been amazed at the sanity at the accuracy and at the usefulness of these guidelines which read like modern scientific information put into the layman's language 3500 years ago some of you listening to me i am sure remember when man landed on the moon early 1970s once they came back they were not allowed to come out they were quarantined they were kept totally isolated and they were observed so that if there is any kind of biological organism on the moon which has infected them that infection should not spread among people here on the earth and therefore they were kept isolated and they were under observation that what they did as part of quarantine has become an essential part of medical practice in the modern times the word of god had very strict rules about quarantine about separation skin diseases at the time of moses were common they did not have access to modern medicine and the best method was separate the person from others there were many other kinds of problems usually lumped together in the bible under the name of leprosy and those people were supposed to be isolated from people they were supposed to be kept under observation for a certain period of time and based upon certain guidelines they were either to be allowed to go back and mingle with people or they were to be separated in extreme cases they were supposed to go and inhabit a desolate area outside the township at that time that definitely was the best possible medical practice surprisingly in the 21st century many of the educated people do not follow these observations or common sense rules i am not talking about kerala but 
if you are somewhere in north especially if you are in the hindi belt if a child develops chicken pox the first thing the mother does is induce the child to go to school even if the child is sick and he, even if he or she doesn't want to go somehow the mother persuades the child to go to school do you know why she ought to know that this child can spread chicken pox to others no she doesn't know in the 21st century many of them believe that if somehow this child is able to pass it on to the next child our child would be healed and therefore in schools it is quite common to see children with chicken pox sitting in the classroom there are very few teachers who send these children home compared to this ignorance of the educated people in the 21st century statements in the bible about separating these people who could communicate their disease or who could spread the germs to others makes for amazing scientific reading there are a lot of other things like that related to the medical sciences for example if a person has a running issue from the body those days they had no method to scientifically study these things they had no classification system they did not have access to modern medication and therefore the instruction which the word of god gave was the best in scientific or best medical information or the best medical protocol for those times there is a very interesting statement found in uh, leviticus chapter 17 and i'll pause for a few minutes to discuss that Leviticus 17 says that people are not supposed to consume animal blood and then the word of god goes on to say that life of the flesh is in the blood today all of you listening to me you know that for animals their life or the life of the flesh is in the blood how many years ago did they discover it It's only recent, very recent. It was in 1616 A.D. that William Harvey made a definitive statement about that. But ignorance about the precise role and function of blood continued even up to the 19th century. In India, some parts of India, it continues even into the 21st century. and they therefore attribute all kinds of things to the blood for example in certain parts of north india any disease for which there is no immediate solution is attributed to contaminated blood and there are hundreds of methods to purify contaminated blood those of you who are from medical background would be shocked that means if you have not yet if you have not practiced in north india then you might be shocked to hear that bloodletting is common in north india even today even today those centuries when they thought that contaminated blood is the cause for anything from cold up to tumors and arthritis and rheumatism the standard solution was cut a vein allow the blood to flow out bloodletting the american president george washington died when to cure a cold a physician practiced or gave him a bloodletting lot of blood was lost and the poor president passed away i think he was a born again man so fortunately he passed into the presence of the lord he loved but that was too soon for him to go but do you know even in the 21st century north india lot of people who believe that it is contaminated blood which is responsible for responsible for this and this and this and this it was about 20 years ago when a man came to our house and he was uh, like a hawker he was saying do you have back pain do you have this pain do you have that pain do you have this 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 do you have skin problem i'll cure you so out of curiosity i asked him what how he would cure 
So he said, sir, I have a very special method and uh, do you have any problem? So I definitely had a vague uh, problem somewhere in my wrist. So I said, I have a vague problem in my wrist. So he came in and he took my wrist and he held my wrist like this. And he pressed and said, do you have pain? Ah, I said, I have pain. If you know how to apply your nail at what spot on the body, 